Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm so glad to be with you here this morning again for another wonderful study on the topic of education and redemption. So whatever you're doing right now, just make sure to set aside your concerns, your worries, and engage with us here, especially if you're watching live. We'd love to hear from you so that uh, we can grow together. And if you're listening to this afterwards, then you're in for a real treat, for a real blessing here today. And so I just want to remind you that while you're watching on Facebook, you can sort of watch party right now so your friends can also enjoy the spiritual blessing you're about to receive. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already for our channel. That will help, help our channel to spread more people to see it, the more subscribers we have. And so that's a way to be a missionary today, to spread the word. And even if you're willing, copy the link on YouTube and text it to five friends right now and say, hey, join the Sabbath school. This is powerful. This is life changing. It's all about God. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the Bible. And we want you to be engaged with us. You're watching live, then participate. Send your comments, share your stories, share your answers to the questions that we're about to share. And maybe you're brand new here and you, 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 you haven't been with us before and you're wondering, what is this? Well, you can follow along daily readings. It takes five to 10 minutes to read uh, some scriptures and some commentary on what we call the Sabbath School. This is the adult Sabbath School lesson. By the way, if you have children of any age, you can actually find other resources here with Bible studies appropriate for their age as well. So go to this website, SabbathSchoolPersonalMinistries.org and find that resource. By the way, if you get into these studies and you say, I would love to be on that panel one day and share my story, share what God is doing in my life, well, let us know that you want to be a part of this. And so and send us an email so that um, we can have you with us here. Uh, one week, okay? All right, I like to begin each week by sharing a gratitude, and you can share yours too. So I'm going to share my gratitude here. I'm grateful for gratitude itself, for gratitude is what makes what I have into enough. A lot of us are concerned, sad that we don't get to be with family. Uh, even if they live nearby, we're being told uh, by health authorities um, that that we need to stay just with our household. And so that makes Thanksgiving a, a hard time for many people. Well, I'm, I'm going to be grateful here. I'm going to be grateful for my, my family that I live with, my wife, my children. I'm going to be grateful for my extended family. I'm grateful that I get to talk to them on the phone and see them on video calls and things like that. So I'm just grateful today uh, for, for family and that I get to have some time with them, even if I can't get to be with, uh, with my mom that I would love to be with and my sisters. In Michigan so I'm just gonna be grateful for that here today and what is your gratitude why are you grateful today and uh, let me uh, while you're thinking about yours let me go ahead and bring our guest I like uh, you to welcome Eve here today Eve so glad to see you good morning happy Sabbath good to see you pastor awesome good to see you Eve and what's your gratitude today Eve well, in spite of all of this COVID um, and people getting sick, I am just thankful for health. Um, we take it so for granted. Uh, we get up in the morning, we're able to move. Um, and there are a lot of people who are unfortunately can't move or they're suffering from this dreadful disease or they have other health maladies. And I am just thankful for health and strength and allowing God um, to bless us with a health message that we can share um, to the world in addition to his salvation. Mm, so glad to have you, Eve, and I'm glad, glad you're healthy. Praise God for that, and, and uh, I give thanks for that too. All right, I also have my friend, Valerie Swan here. Hi, Valerie. Good morning, Good morning everyone. I'm so thankful. Um, God has been so good to me. Um, as I reflect on what's been going on in the world, I'm most grateful for love, to be able to give and receive love. You know, life is hard and it is such a blessing to be able to fellowship with our family and our friends and just grow together in Christ and know that we have the support that we need to get through life. Mm, thank you for sharing, Valerie. And I'm grateful you're here as well. All right, and here we have Myron today with us. Myron was with us here just a few weeks ago. And Myron, good to have you again. 
Thank you. Uh, happy Sabbath. I uh, guess I'm most grateful for the love that I've been shown uh, through the church members and, and the people around me, because what I've come to realize in the last couple of weeks is that there are those, those that spend their whole lives searching for what so many of us take for granted. Mm, so true, Myron. So true. Thank you so much for sharing that. Appreciate. It. Looking forward to having you here again today and your and your sharing. All right. So um, let's go ahead and take a moment. If uh, if you happen to be driving while you're listening to this, you don't need to close your eyes. But Eve is going to lead us in prayer, and let's go ahead and talk to God now. Absolutely, dear Holy Father, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We come before you on this Sabbath morning thanking you for love, thanking you for health, thanking you for the ability to even give thanks to you. And as we enjoy the Sabbath and we enjoy the Sabbath with people from around the world, we will just ask that you be with us as we open up your word and discover your truth. Be with the panel, um, each one of their homes, each one of their families, um, watch over them, protect them and guide them. And Lord, help us to um, explain your word and then give us your Holy Spirit so that this word may go out and touch someone else's life. We love you and we thank you. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Eve. So today we're, ta we're talking on the topic of redemption. And you may be wondering, what is that redemption? Well, salvation. How is it that God saves us? Saves us from what? Well, listen carefully here today as we talk about this. For the Bible tells the story of humankind from God's perspective. And so in the Bible, we see how God educated His people and taught them about His grace and His plan to redeem, to save them, to restore them. So the first thing that we that, that we see here uh, today is uh, because we're doing this in the context of education. We're, we're, this is called education and redemption. And so the first thing is that redeeming education. Uh, that's the first uh, topic here for today, and it comes from Genesis five and verse one, where it says, "And the and the day." God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. This is in Genesis 5, 1. And in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it says that male and female, he created them in the image of God. So, human beings are the only creatures on earth, according to the Bible, that were created in the image of God. Adam and Eve were supposed to transmit this image, this likeness, to their children. However, sin, and what is sin, whatever is harmful to self or to others, that is sin, made their children to be born in the likeness, in their likeness, uh, in that likeness of them, of the fallen condition, and not as they had been created, Adam and Eve, in the likeness of God. So the image of God deteriorated as time went on. So the image of God has been gradually distorted with each human generation. The purpose of God's education is to restore the image of God in us thanks to what God is doing or what's called the plan of redemption. This plan covers the whole human history since sin entered the world to the new creation, including Jesus' incarnation. What is that? When God became a human being. We'll keep studying the plan of redemption for eternity we are told. Now, here is how one of the pioneers of the Adventist movement uh, summarized this. And um, let's see, let me put it on the screen for us here. And uh, Eve, would you, would you read it for us from the screen there? Sure. To restore in man the image of his maker, to bring him back to the perfection in which he was created, to promote the development of body, mind, and soul, that divine purpose in his creation might be realized. This was to be the work of redemption. This is the object of education, the great object of life. Mm, yes. So that comes from the book Education, uh, page 15. All right. So uh, here is the story that I would want you to share uh, right now uh, in the context of this can you share with us your uh, or your family's ongoing 
redemption story. In other words, how has God been blessing you personally or your family? Did you come to faith uh, as, a, as a, an adult already? Were you a child? Or did you always know that God was on your side? Right? Or if that was the case, then um, where, where would you be today if it weren't for the grace of God and His redemption, His work in the lives of your parents or grandparents or whoever came to faith first? So while you're typing that story and you're sharing it in the chat, um, let's, have, let's have one of our, our, our panelists here today share with us her story. Valerie, would, would you share on this? I will. Thank you. Um, when I think about my redemption story, I want to frame it within the context of an educational setting. There's a very popular quote, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I'll say it again, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Um, the premise of that is the foundation of my redemption story. Uh, every time that I've had a need, um, every time that I felt low, felt lost, uh, the, the greatest teacher was there. Um, and I'm so thankful for that premise. I'm so thankful that there's no time limit on it. Um, to personalize it even more, um, I grew up in the Adventist church, you know, went to church, was involved, did everything I needed to do, but I never really thought about my personal salvation until a close friend of mine died in a car accident. And I recall during the funeral service, the pastor was saying, you know, I know everyone is here mourning over her, but what about you? She was in the Lord, she loved the Lord. And the next thing she will see when she opens her eyes is her savior saying, well done, good and faithful servant. And when I heard that, I thought to myself, Lord, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm the student. He's the teacher. And he put so many other people in my life to act as teacher, to influence, to guide and support me. So I truly believe my redemption story is that never ending promise. When the student is ready, the teacher will, ap will appear. And I, I praise God for that. I love that, Valerie. When the when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So it's like you, you can't really learn something unless you're ready to, to learn it. And no matter, right. even if you have the teacher right there with you. Right, exactly, um, exactly. And it's an ongoing promise, an ongoing premise, um, the longevity of it. And it gives us hope because daily, daily, Jesus is waiting. You know, he's saying, I'm ready, I'm here. Are you ready? As soon as you are ready, I will reveal, reveal through my word, reveal through my servants. Uh, God is so good, and I'm so thankful for that. Mm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I, I have all kinds of thoughts going through my mind right now, especially in parenting. You think, you know, it's it's it. I, I think that's going to help me because <laughs> uh, you know, it's your child is not going to learn something until they're ready. And so, what's the job of the teacher, the parent in this case? It's you got to wait. Uh, right. You got to wait right. until the student is ready. Thank you for sharing that. Very, You're very welcome. insightful, uh, powerful. Okay, so now we're going to um, move to, uh, let's see, uh, where are we? Oh, here's another, here's another awesome quote uh, that, okay, wait, where am I? Okay, right here. So, um, Jesus as teacher. That's what we're going to get into now. Jesus as teacher. Okay, so let me put the scripture up on the screen for us. And that scripture, it's right here. John 3, verse 2. Jesus as teacher. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. And so, Jesus had many titles. Savior, Redeemer, the Lamb of God. One of the main titles that, that he had and he still has is that of Rabbi, um, which is Aramaic for my teacher or teacher. And so, uh, uh, so in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, it, it, it contains a surprising prophecy about the Messiah. Jesus is introduced as teacher in this passage. 
And here's some of the things that it says that he will have the spirit of wisdom, he will have a spirit of counsel, knowledge, and he will judge with righteousness, he will decide with equity. This will be the final result of his work as teacher. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Nicodemus, if you remember that story recorded in John chapter 3, he was one of the first people to acknowledge Jesus as rabbi, teacher. And he himself, this person, Nicodemus, was a teacher. And Jesus explained to him that his gift of teaching was a gift from God. God prepares the teachers to carry out their work. So as Valerie, as Valerie was saying, when the, when the student is ready, then uh, God empowers the teacher to do the teaching. So let me, let me ask a question, because we have here with us, um, if you've seen our guests, Eve and Valerie, they're both uh, professors, they're in the teaching, prof uh, that's, this is what they do. And so I thought this, uh, this was a great question, and um, Eve, you suggested this question, and I cannot wait to hear your answer. What attributes make an effective teacher? Well, before I share those attributes, I think it's important to kind of frame uh, the context in which we're talking about. Um, all of us are students, right? All of us are learning as we go through life. And mm -hmm. so as we think about the lessons and the experiences that we have learned and are learning, how do we effectively learn those lessons? And I think Jesus was spot on um, throughout his teaching, throughout his ministry. Um, he always shared a story and he made that story relatable so that whether you were a seven-year-old or a 77-year-old, um, you always got something from the story. And so um, in my daily teaching as, as, as a professor, I like to infuse the information that I'm giving to my students with little stories because that's what people remember. And then the second thing before I turn it over to Valerie is the ability to ask questions. Um, curiosity is what prompts us to learn. And so in the Gospels, Jesus asks um, the people that he was teaching some questions. Um, and depending upon how they answered those questions, Jesus would go further in sharing the good news and the gospel with them. So the ability to share a story, to connect with your student, as well as offering um, questions to ask your students to kind of get their curiosity going, um, to kind of get them engaged with you and starting to think about some of the things that you're sharing with them are two really important ways to connect and pass information and help your students learn. And I'm gonna turn it over to Val. Valerie, I think you're muted. Thank you, Eve. Uh, great question again. Um, I, I spend a lot of time teaching uh, my students every Wednesday. Uh, we spend eight hours together in a Zoom lab, Zoom, Zoom lab. And one thing that stands out for me is humility. Um, our students come from all walks of life, just like we all come from various walks of life. Mm -hmm. And although I have content expertise, the humility to understand that students are also bringing something very significant to the dynamics, to the learning environment. So in order to be an effective teacher, I've got to be humble. Mm -hmm. I have to listen. I have to realize that students uh, can and have changed my perspective on many topics. So being open and willing, being humble, creates that learning environment where students can say, well, okay, I believe that now I am comfortable with sharing, with being transparent. And that's where the magic begins. Yeah, you know, you, you can have a student teacher relationship, but if it's based on a hierarchy of one being superior um, over the other, it, it limits growth. It limits joy, actually. I get so much joy from interacting with my students because um, at this point in the semester, we're at week 12 of the semester, um, I, I treat them as family. 
you know, and I want them to know that as much as I'm here to teach them, I'm here to learn from them as well. Um, yeah. Love it. Love it. Thank you for sharing each of you. Now, there may be people wondering right now, what subjects do you teach? Could you tell us just briefly what you teach, Valerie and Eve? Okay. Uh, I, go ahead, Beth. Uh, I teach in a nursing program at Montgomery College. Um, I teach a seven credit course. It's called Fundamentals of Nursing, where we address what is normal and abnormal in every system of the body from neurological to gastrointestinal, um, in, gastrointestinal. <laughs> wow, that seven credits, that is that, wow, that's amazing. Eve? So I am a medical laboratory scientist. So I teach medical laboratory science. So chemistry, uh, blood bank, hematology. So to piggyback on Valerie, all of the diseases that she's discussing in her class when you send a sample to the lab, it's the laboratorian who actually tests those samples and gives um, the results to the doctor to make determination on those diseases. So in, uh, we're doing COVID testing right now. I'm teaching people how to actually perform COVID testing um, to give those results to uh, their healthcare provider. Oh, wow. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Oh, Valerie, thank you. This yeah. is a comment from another educator. Go ahead and share, Val. Right. We have a comment from Elder Hammond. The authority to teach others comes from God. James reminds us that all wisdom and all knowledge comes from God. We need to ask, but we need to ask. Thank you, Elder Hammond. That is so true. Um, that is the one thing that, that we as educators need to recognize. All of our wisdom all of our knowledge comes from God. And if we use that as the foundation of all that we do, um, God will be lifted up and praised. Mm, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Keep the comments coming. And even if we don't get to post your comment on, on the stream for everybody to see, uh, every person watching on Facebook or YouTube will be able to read your comments. So you are blessing someone just by sharing and we'll, and we'll share as much as we can uh, here as we go, okay? All right, so now we get into another topic uh, here for today, or another subtopic rather, and that is, and so we said so far that Jesus, of course, is the teacher, and um, now we're gonna look at how the Bible itself can be considered a teacher, all right? So here's the scripture, Luke 16, verse 29, they have Moses, this is Jesus speaking, by the way. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So what's he saying? Uh, now, it wasn't that Moses and the prophets that Jesus is talking about here. It's not that they were in, there in person, but he means their writings that were read constantly. So uh, Jesus here is saying, we... Uh, they, they should learn. Now, frankly, he, here in this passage, he's telling them that they were not understanding and interpreting correctly, for they were rejecting him, the very subject of what Moses and the prophets wrote. Uh, but nonetheless, that is the point, that the Bible is given for our instruction. So, now, Paul, the apostle, a little bit later, uh, after, after Jesus said these words, introduced the Bible to Timothy as uh, the textbook per excellence, the best book ever. It is, uh, this, this was the memory verse, by the way, this week, if you, if, you were, uh, if you were following along with us. It says that all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's recorded in the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, the second one, chapter 3, verse 16. Each one of his parts has something we can learn from. So let's do a brief review here of what the Bible, uh, what, what it's made of. I have my, my big study Bible right here with me. And so uh, the Pentateuch is the, the, the beginning of it, the first five books of the Bible. The basically, it, it means teaching. The, the word is Torah teaching doctrine sometimes is translated as law, but the real meaning of the word is the teaching uh, of God, how to live according to God's plan. Then we find some of the first prophets, 
uh, recorded uh, their writings and what you know what the revelations they received from God. This is also what is called the spirit of prophecy that's been in existence um, ever since God started to communicate with people through prophets um, after the fall of Adam and Eve. And it's how Israel practiced those principles. Examples of how some obeyed and the majority disobeyed. And then we have the example of the latter prophets, which go more into the mistakes of Israel and how to avoid them. And then there's, uh, in the Old Testament, there's what's called the writings. That includes the Psalms, the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the wisdom literature, and it's good and back practical examples of uh, education. Uh, and a lot of great instruction there. Then we get into what in Christianity we call the New Testament. That is the story of Christ and his apostles. And in here we have the historical books, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They contain much educational content, particularly the teachings of Christ. Then there is Paul's letters what he, that he wrote to the churches or individuals. And also other letters that others wrote, like Peter and John. And they give us their practical applications. Great, great instruction. I love Colossians. Like if you want some instruction on how to have a peace in your heart, uh, check out Colossians chapter 3. Just amazing wisdom there. And then we have uh, the book of Revelation, which is an overview of the educational development and its ultimate goal and the restoration of all things. Okay? So with this, I want to ask you all a question. And here's the question. Would you share your answer in the chat? And you, you cannot answer this question incorrectly because I'm asking you to share your story, your experience. So what is the most life-changing lesson found in the Bible for you? What has made the biggest difference? And uh, while you're thinking about that and typing your answer, um, Myron, would you share on this? For me, the most life-changing lesson in the bible comes to me from luke 7 38 through 46 and it it resonates with me so much because we're talking about teaching and education and in this this person really spoke very few or no words and it's the story of uh, mary how she came in even with all of her baggage, because uh, it resonates with me because of all the things that I went through and have gone through in my life and what it took for me to come back into the fold. Um, you know, I, I it's just to give you a brief background, I um, walked away from the church. I didn't want anything else to do with it. I had but just fed up with the, what I felt was the hypocrisy and the, the, the unfair judgment of, of what I call my fellow Christians. And I wanted nothing at all to do with uh, Adventism or church in general. Um, and I spent the next few years mired in uh, alcoholism and drug addiction. Uh, I spent 20 years of my life um, battling a $300 a day habit, um, cocaine habit. And I, I had to fight through all of that. But what really resonated with me was when I finally did, God had changed some things in my life. I know we don't have time to go into it. I'll save that for personal testimony. But when he finally woke me up and, and, and got me to pay attention, I won't say woke me up, got me to pay attention. And I came back to church and I came back to Seabrook. It reminded me of how uh, of Simon's reaction, um, how I felt kind of shunned, but I was determined not to walk away this time. And when I look at that story, how she walked in and the people judged her, and there were those that whispered behind her back, and she kept coming forward, even though she spoke no words. Her actions spoke volumes. She walked up and not only did she wash Jesus' feet with her tears, she dried them with her hair. And the people that were sitting there in the room with him, 
some of them, none of them, to my knowledge, ever offered him anything to wash his feet with. And but yet they were passing judgment on this one. So for me, that lesson speaks volumes in that you don't always have to speak for your point to get across. Mm, Myra, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. He or she who has been forgiven much loves much. Uh, and the point is, uh, when we know that we've been forgiven much, uh, it just changes everything. Thank you for sharing, my friend. Yes. Uh, all right. Um, thank you for sharing. And Valerie, why don't you share with us some of the comments that are coming in Facebook? Uh, we have a great message from Brother Palmer. Um, his lesson comes from the verses, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Brother Palmer says this strengthens him each day and that life without Christ is dead. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Dwight. Appreciate that. Uh, and you can share on right there on YouTube or the Facebook chat you're watching on so we can uh, be blessed by your sharing. All right, next I want to show you this powerful, powerful quote from the book This Day with God. It's a daily reader. Um, and um, here's what it says. Uh, pay close attention, all right? It's on the screen too if you want to read along. The Bible is the textbook and it is to be searched diligently, not as we would read a book among many books. It must be to us a book that meets the wants of the soul. This book will make the man or the woman who studies and obeys it wise unto salvation. This was an, uh, somebody that was just in love with the Word of God. So I have a question for you, my friend. Have you fallen in love with the Bible? And it's okay to be honest. Just, just, just think about that. But I want you to know that if you haven't fallen in love with the Bible yet, that there are millions of people uh, who, uh, throughout history, in fact, probably billions at this point, who have been transformed and who love this book, the Bible. And so, uh, if you're brand new to this, we, we welcome your inquiries and uh, your desire to, to get to know God, this God that the Bible talks about. So, how did you fall in love with the Bible? If you have fallen in love with the Bible, share. If you've had struggles with uh, reading the Bible, you can't find a way to make it uh, enjoyable, make it a daily habit, then share, share your struggle with us too. Uh, just let's, let's talk. So uh, let's bring Eve here. Eve, you want to share your story with us on this topic? How did you fall in love with the Bible? Sure. Um, my love affair with the Bible started when I was really young. Uh, my mother, uh, she did something that was pretty phenomenal. Um, and I look at it now. Um, she introduced me to personal Bible study. So it was in our home. Uh, practice that we had to get up a little early to make our seven o'clock bus. And so that meant that my parent, my mother, she um, allowed us about 30 to 45 minutes. The first thing that we did when we got up um, after going to the bathroom is to uh, spend some time in the word. So we would spend about 30 to 45 minutes in our personal Bible study. And then we would actually have family worship. Um, and family worship was about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we would go ahead and start our day. Um, and she never put any restrictions on us as far as what you need to read or what you should be saying. And so I would just get up. And as you can imagine, as a young person, you know, we start out with the things that we know, you know, the John 316 and some of the other um, uh, verses that we know really well. 
Um, but then she started adding some games, like, you know, she wanted us to come to family worship knowing the first five books of the Bible, or we had to identify um, a patriarch or someone um, that maybe we were learning about in Sabbath school. And she tried to tie it a little bit to our Sabbath school lesson. And that really provided me a foundation and a framework to not be scared of the Bible, to go into the Bible and to just read it. And as I was in school, of course, there would be situations as a student, um, as a friend of my peers, um, peer pressure that would come um, along. And I always remember that little small voice um, that would say, do you really want to do that? Or do you really want to say that? Or, you know, you're about to have an exam. Why don't you pray to God about it? You know, and it always went back to my personal Bible study. And it always seemed like there was a verse for the day that kind of anchored my uh, my day. And as I grew up and as I um, sometimes strayed away, maybe I didn't have my Bible, uh, my devotional reading that day. And I always felt that when I left the house, something just wasn't quite right. I felt a little topsy-turvy. And I can remember two uh, situations where um, I, I would open my Bible and say, Lord, I don't know what you want me to read today, but I'm going to just read something. And the the verse seemed kind of ordinary. It didn't really speak to me at the time, but I read it, you know, I prayed about it, I meditated on it, and then I went up behind, I went uh, along with my day. And sure enough, by mid-afternoon, I was met with a situation where that verse became alive for me. And I was like, oh my goodness, what would have happened if I didn't spend that time with my Savior and go through his word and just have the word be made flesh um, so that I could actually deal with a particular situation I had to deal with that day. And that really solidified that before I leave my home or before I start my day, that I need to spend some time with Christ. I need to spend some time in the word. It's it's not a um, small thing for, for Christ to be called the word of God and the word made flesh. Um, and that's the way I began falling in love with the Bible. Um, and that love affair continues to this day. Mm. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Eve. Now, Eve, uh, some people listening must be thinking, oh, Eve's mom must have been a pastor or her dad must have been a pastor or something. No, she wasn't. Uh, she was just a, a regular church member. In fact, um, I'm going to share this. My mother was actually illiterate. And one of the ways she mm -hmm. taught us how to read was to uh, go into the Bible. And we would have to read the Bible to her. And as she struggled with her literacy, um, it wasn't until she passed away that we figured that she had dyslexia, which is one of the reasons, and it wasn't diagnosed. Um, but she wanted to make sure that her children knew how to read and we would read the Bible to her. And that actually helped us as well. Mm, wow. All right. Uh, uh... Valerie, you posting a message there from somebody that we know, Damian Johnson, yes. that's a senior pastor. What's he saying? Message from Pastor Johnson. Sister Brunson was a real Christian. When my family came to the Adventist church, she was the glue that kept us there. Such a pleasant, down-to-earth, spirit-filled woman. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Pastor Day. That was my mom. Definitely. Thank you. Wow. Wow. That's so beautiful. Uh, Eve, when you were sharing just now about your mom making those games, um, and I wanted to bring that up because, look, um, sometimes pastors are idolized, like pastors have it real easy, like pastors, you know, they can just teach the kids the Bible and whatever. Yeah. Let me tell you, pastors struggle. Pastors have difficulty. Pastors uh, also wake up on days they don't want, they don't want to read the book. So it's we're just human beings, and um, and in our in our lives is is just the same thing. So um, one 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 thing that you reminded me of, Eve, that, that one I could tell you a lot of failures here, but I'll tell you something that's working. Okay, mm -hmm. something that's working is um, uh, playing that twenty questions game that that children love to play. Um, yeah, that's fine. So so we we we've, we've been doing that, uh, and the kids initiate. Oh, let's play let's play the the. 20 questions game and basically if you haven't heard of it is if one person thinks of uh, a concept or a thing or a person or character and then everybody gets to ask up to 20 questions 
asking for, and they're yes or no questions. So was it a man? Was it a woman? Uh, whatever. But they've been making it a Bible, a Bible character or a Bible thing. And so, was it in the Old Testament? Was it in the New Testament? Did Jesus see it? Was Jesus with this person? Those kind of things. And so it's made it fun. Uh -huh. So thanks for sharing that, um, Eve. All right. So, so far, we've covered uh, the fact that uh, Christian education is, uh, is a big deal. We've covered Jesus as teacher, the Bible as teacher. Now, let's take a, a few moments now to discuss the concept of people as teachers. Now, the, the comment from Valerie earlier is really in my mind. I just it's such a catchy phrase that it rings so true that um, the teacher will appear when the student is ready. So I, I'm, right now I'm saying, God, help me to be ready because I want you to appear. But God uses people uh, to teach us. So here is the scripture for this. Uh, Proverbs 16, verse 23, The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. So, um, we're almost out of time, so I'm just going to not make a lot of commentary here. Let me just go right to the question. And the question is this, besides Jesus, who was your favorite teacher in the Bible and why? Valerie, we'll, take, we'll give it to you. I have to say the Apostle Paul. Um, Paul was a um, slang word, in my opinion, gangster. Paul grew up, he was an Israelite, he had privilege. He felt like mm. things should be a certain way. This is when he was called Saul. He persecuted mm. Christians, but guess what? He had a moment. He was a student, he was ready. The teacher appeared on the road to Damascus. Paul went on and he preached. He preached the importance of salvation through Christ. Not only that, he talked about everything related to the Christian experience, about love, about care, about how to treat each other. Um, I love in his writings, he uses one of my favorite strategies as a teacher, questioning. For example, in Romans, he says, you know, so because we have grace, does it mean that the law doesn't apply? And he immediately responds, no, that's not right. You know, he was really great about that. I love that he was relatable in his writings in Romans. He even has a full chapter dedicated to, in my opinion, shouting out people. He says, you know, thank you to Julia. Thank you to Jason. It's a full chapter of him acknowledging the contributions of everyone. So as I think about my personal walk with Christ, you know, I love the fact that I can be fixed in one direction, but if I'm willing, if I open my heart to Christ, I can turn completely around a full 360 or really 180, the opposite direction, go in the opposite direction as Paul did and be a servant of God, a, a humble servant of God. So I'm so thankful for him. I think he is an awesome, awesome teacher and he's contributed so much in the Holy Word. Mm, thanks Val, thanks so much. Very good, and speaking of Paul, he was one that uh, spoke of the Holy Spirit as a teacher very, very much. Uh, for example, in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 5 to 7, um, we see that uh, his education does not rely on human wisdom but on God's power. It does not follow the wisdom of this age but teaches God's wisdom. That was Paul, the one that Valley was just read, uh, 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 referencing. So that's the Holy Spirit. And because we're almost out of time, let's just, um, let's just still take a look at this scripture here from John 14, Jesus speaking. The Helper, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I say to you. So, uh, this, is, this is powerful. So my friend, let me just jump right to the question. Do you know that the Holy Spirit has taught you? What has the Holy Spirit taught you? What's the main thing? Uh, Myron, I'm going to give this one to you. We don't have a ton of time, but can you share with us for about one minute your answer to this question? Okay. He's taught me temperance and humility, um, which were two things I was severely lacking. Um, because without those two things, <laughs> you aren't any good to anybody, let alone uh, uh, as far as Christianity goes. Um, 
but those are the two things that the Holy Spirit has brought and in, into my life, uh, temperance and humility. Temperance and humility. Someone has said that, um, that, that what is sin if not a lack of self-control, a lack of temperance? Wow, Mara, thank you for sharing that. So powerful. I wish we had more time so we could uh, hear so much more. All right, uh, we have more stuff here, but there's a lot to cover here today. So we're going to have to uh, close right there. Uh, and uh, let's bring our full panel up on the screen and just thank them so much for being with us. And uh, Valerie, time is up. So would you please uh, have our closing prayer? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for all you've done for us. Lord, we lift your name on high. We sing your praises, Lord. Thank you for being our creator, our savior, our redeemer, Lord. We're so thankful for your grace. Lord, as we move on to the divine hour, Lord, please keep our eyes, keep our hearts, keep our thoughts focused on you, Lord. Help us to want to know you more each and every day. Let our mind be in you, Jesus Christ. In your son's name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. All right, everybody, our time has ended. Um, we will have the divine hour, as Valerie just said, because we believe the divine comes down and speaks in a powerful way. You don't want to miss Pastor Johnson's sermon today. That will start in about 10 minutes or so. Refresh your browser if you need to. And uh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure to subscribe there on YouTube. It helps so that our channel gets recommended to more people. So you're doing the Lord's work just by clicking subscribe if you haven't done so already. And so God bless you. We'll be with you again uh, next week, same time, same place here. So you take care and bye-bye.